simultaneous at all. And that's the essence of the time problem. And in physics, the explanation of the problem starts with time dilation. Given the constancy of the speed of light, there's no doubt that a simple light clock in motion runs slow by a factor of gamma. But if a more conventional clock went along for the ride, would it slow down by the same amount? The answer is timely, because if only the light clock slows down, it might be possible to compare their times. Then if the times were the same, they would be at rest. But if the light clock were slower, that would be because they're in motion. But in motion with respect to what? The basic premise of relativity is that there can be no absolute motion and no absolute rest. And if those conditions don't exist, no experiment can possibly detect them. So if the theory of relativity is correct, every clock in the universe must behave exactly as a light clock does. And that's not just a discovery about clocks. That's a fact about the nature of time itself. Time dilation places the relationship between time and space in an entirely new light. Which is exactly what was happening in art and literature in the early years of this century. In art as well as science, the idea of time and space was now far more than a passing fancy. Just as Einstein was trying to place everything in a new perspective, Virginia Woolf urged writers to move beyond the formal railway line of a sentence. And no writer innovated more with time and space than James Joyce. Like Einstein's world, writes critic Edmund Wilson, Joyce's world is always changing as it is perceived by different observers at different times. <laughs>